Good morning to Come On Life Church. Uh, today is Tuesday, June 29th, and we are on day two of the Bible reading plan, Encountering the Holy God. And if you're watching this video on Tuesday, it means that you have survived this massive heat wave. All right, so uh, Monday, the hottest day. Sunday, comparably, even just as hot. And so, uh, yeah, I hope and pray that you are all safe, uh, that you're doing well, and that you're enjoying the decrease in temperature, even though it's supposed to be in the 90s today. Uh, with that said, the theme for this morning is the trauma of holiness. And that might seem like an odd point of focus. Uh, but the point that the author makes is basically when you encounter the holiness of God, how is that going to forever change your life like how is that going to change your life forever for example like when you evaluate your life and your perceived holiness or, or righteousness and you weigh that against God's almighty holiness and righteousness will you realize in comparison to God that you are much right and that's true like it, when it comes to God's holiness and when it comes to myself and our brokenness yeah we are not even on the same level we can never ever compare but imagine that when you finally come face to face with the holiness of god with the glory of, of god when you begin just to experience a glimpse of that in, in light of just who you are like the sinner that you are in desperate need of a savior the uncleanliness the uncleanly uh status of yourself like when you weigh that against like, uh, god's holiness right w will you see just how not just how bad you are but how magnificent god is and that's something that our author wants us to think about this morning. And so today we are given Isaiah chapter 6 verses 5 to 7 to read. And so uh, let's look at that. Let's look at that together actually. So if you can go ahead and find that, it is Isaiah chapter 6 verses 5 and 7. And remember, as we are reading this, keep in mind the idea, the trauma of, of holiness. All right. But this is what it says. Verse 5. And I said... Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having his hand, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. Amen. You know, the first thing that jumps out for me is Isaiah's statement. Woe is me. Right, for the first time in the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is actually speaking his own choice of words. And his very first words that come out of his mouth is a prophetic woe against himself. You see, up until this point, it has been God speaking. But here Isaiah speaks his own words, his own choice of words, and it is a woe against himself. His woe against himself speaks of his uncleanliness, aka his uncleanness, right? His uncleanness status, aka his inability to be in the very presence of God. Why? Because Isaiah knew the kind of man. That he was he knew the kind of people he dwelt with but what makes him like this like what causes his attitude his demeanor his heart to be like this and it's because of what is said in, in verse 5 right it's because his eyes has seen the Lord and verse 5 says this for my eyes have seen the King the Lord of hosts and in other words he has seen the Almighty God you see Isaiah has seen the glory the holiness of God he has encountered the Holy God. And this, this moment or this instance that he is describing, that he is referring to, this is his trauma of holiness. It's kind of like when, when, you, when you've ever been in a situation and, you're, and you want to explain something, but you can only explain it because you have a personal experience, a personal perspective. It's basically you're like, guys, if you could only see what my eyes have seen, then you will understand. Right? That is the trauma of holiness that Isaiah is experiencing in our scripture today. Or it's kind of like when people are say, well, 
when you've walked, you know, so many miles in my shoe, or when you've seen the things that I've seen, or you've been to the places that I've been, and that's how they kind of justify, you know, their, their reasoning, their thinking, or their actions, their attitudes, and so forth, right? That's a justification for the way you are, the way that you act, and the way that you think, because of the things that you've seen, the things that you have experienced, and so when you align that, when you put that into the perspective of when you encounter the Holy God, the living God, how does that trauma of holiness forever change your life? Right? What are the things that you have seen with God? Like, What are the things that you've experienced with God? How has that changed your life? Or how is that changing your life? You see, not only does Isaiah have this encounter with God, but verse 6 tells us that a seraphim flew to him with burning coals in his hand and touched his mouth saying, Behold, this, right, the, the coal that he took in from the altar has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. And I don't know if you guys can see what's going on right now, but Isaiah is basically going from his, going from woe to welcomed. He goes from woe is me to now being welcomed because he is now clean, right? His guilt is forgiven. His sin is atoned. So we asked a question this morning. What does the trauma of holiness do for us? What does it do for you? How does it impact your life? Or how has it changed you to where you can no longer live a particular way any longer because of what you have experienced and because of what you have seen? You know, Thinking about this morning and our study, it really reminds me of a song that we sing. It's a hymnal. And in that in that first line, the opening line, it says, My eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. And this song is also known as a battle hymn. And so you military guys, I, I imagine you're very familiar with this song. But when you think about this, this, this praise, what do you think the real purpose of this song is supposed to be? You know, upon my own reflections, I'd imagine that it's meant to stir up within those singing this song something like courage and confidence. I believe that it's meant to instill hope as you cry out, glory, glory, hallelujah. But the beginning of the song says, my eyes have seen the glory. And that to me says, this song is meant to stir up within us a confidence that remembers the God that they have seen. A confidence that trusts God. A confidence that faith is in God. It's like our lives responding to the trauma of holiness as we continue to march forward in life. Because when your eyes have seen the glory of the Lord, You've seen all that you need to see to continue moving forward and living this life for the glory of God. And so what trauma of holiness can you recall in your life? What trauma of holiness have you experienced in your, in your relationship with Christ? And how has your encounter with the Holy God changed the way that you go about living your life? For the glory of our God. My eyes have seen the coming glory of the Lord. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Church, I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. Until next time, may the Lord bless you and keep you. Go in peace. Amen and amen.